Back, a BC-based biotech firm is seeking emergency use approval from Health Canada for its product. It's a nasal spray that has been called a breakthrough in the fight against COVID-19. As CTV News reports, the treatment is like a hand sanitizer for your nose. I have it. I, I, I carry it everywhere. Gilly Regev is a biochemistry PhD and CEO of Sanitize, which has been testing nitric oxide to fight COVID-19. Nitric oxide is a molecule we, we have in our body naturally. It is uh, approved to use through pressurized gas cylinders to treat what we call blue babies. It's been used for years to treat premature babies with low oxygen levels, so it has a high safety profile. The nitric oxide is an antimicrobial, so it kills viruses, kills bacteria, it kills fungi. And it does more than just kill the coronavirus. It can stop the replication of the virus and nitric oxide also attached to what we all know today as the ACE2 receptor. So the, the, the SARS-CoV-2 goes into our body through a specific receptor, which is the ACE2 receptor. And the nitric oxide attached to the same receptor, so it blocks the virus from attaching. Phase two testing in the UK recently showed that the sanitized nasal spray reduced the viral load in infected patients by 95% in 24 hours, 99% in 72 hours. When we say 95%, that means we really reduced the viral load significantly. Um, the 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 correlation to that is the viral load is very well correlated in the literature to symptoms and to the progression of the disease. There were no side effects and it's a safe, affordable and easily distributed treatment. Sanitize is now hoping to begin discussions with Health Canada to offer the nasal spray as an emergency treatment. Pauline Chan, CTV News. Sanitize has been approved for use in Israel and New Zealand, but where is Canada in all of this? Gilly Regev is with us now, CEO of Sanitize. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, and I did want to start there. What have you heard from Health Canada about your path to approval here? Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. We are in discussions with Health Canada. The discussions are, are going towards, we, we can start doing our application. It's a rolling submission and we will see how soon will they, they be able to approve it. We will have to start a phase three clinical trial as well, which is a larger trial. And, and, and I think the biggest challenge with, with Health Canada is this is looked at as a drug, although as you've heard me saying before, this we're delivering it at 190 times lower dose than what is already approved to use for babies. So it's a very low dose, it's very safe, mm. but it is a prescription drug. So unless we find a way to, to transfer it quickly from a prescription to a non-prescription drug, people will have to wait if they get infected. By the time they get tested, they get their symptoms, they get tested, they get to see a doctor. By the time they get to it, it's going to be too late to, to prevent the progression. And we want to get it to people as soon as possible. So we're hoping that Health Canada will work with us to get it quickly into an OTC. So just to, so we understand, what's different in Israel or in New Zealand that allows the process to move more quickly? It's, as I understand, soon to be on sale in pharmacies in New Zealand. What, why is that possible and it's not possible here? There, there, because um, the, the delivery of nitric oxide here is topical and not systemic, it doesn't cause any systemic effect to the body. It creates a chemical barrier. And there are uh, quite a few countries around the world that are willing to look at this as a medical device and not a drug. The path to market for medical device is a faster path. So if we can, can get this approved quicker, we can get it to the people who need it quicker. The, the definition is a little bit different. It will be, as a medical device, it is approved to prevent um, viral infections. And that's not a path you could pursue in Canada? You opted not to, or it's not open to you? It was not open to us. We've tried to have some discussions, but uh, the, the definition of nitric oxide is can, in Canada is a drug, even though if we take the bottle, we don't have nitric oxide in the bottle. We deliver a very, very, very small amount of nitric oxide um, in the nose locally, but still the conversation that we had so far, they made it very clear that this is a drug, it's not a device. And is this, uh, is this patented to you? I mean, is this uh, process or technology something nobody else has done or do you have competition out there or potential competition out there? 
Uh, this specific delivery of nitric oxide is, is unique to us. We've patented the way we deliver it through these liquids. There are um, a few co other companies that have tried in the past. I think that the challenge is always getting the right dose to the right place. And so far, we are the only ones that I know that have managed to, uh, to show effectiveness in human against the SARS-CoV-2 with a nitric oxide treatment uh, that, that can be used at home. Were you hoping to manufacture this in Canada for use around the world? Was that your intention? That, that was our hope. We've um, a couple of times tried to submit an application to the Strategic Innovation Fund to, to help support this. Uh, and and we, we are still hoping that we will get some Canadian support so we can actually bring the manufacturer back into Canada and not have to do it somewhere else. The, this, this is still the, the hope that where we're going to get. We, so far, we got, and we got refused any, for funding. And do you have a sense of, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of focus on this kind of treatment right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic. It would help people, presumably, with, uh, with this pandemic. Is there a greater sense of urgency on the part of the folks that you're dealing with uh, inside these agencies? Um, I think I think with Health Canada, there is definitely tendency to try and work with us quicker to get this. Not not with manufacturing uh, on the manufacturing side. The reason why we did it in Israel is just we got we got it done much faster, um, and and with some other support uh, to get it in Canada. We're still looking for the right options to to start doing manufacturing in Canada as soon as possible. We, we would like this to be a Canadian product. Where's, where are you with the U.S. market? Do you have any plans to uh, apply to the FDA or would it be a medical device in the American market? We, we will apply for an emergency use authorization. Uh, we're still exploring the paths in the, in the U.S. We do have an open IND to do clinical trials in the U.S., but we're still exploring all our options there. And so when, you, you know, obviously you, you will be manufacturing, you have a couple of markets now. Is your expectation that you will have success in Canada in, well, give me a time frame or what, what your hope is for a time frame of actually having approval here of some sort? Since it's not, it's not under my control, I don't know. I can tell you that within the next couple of months, we're, gonna, we're planning to complete all our applications. The, the question is will, whether Health Canada will require completion of a phase three clinical trial in order to get this approved. We're hoping that we can start getting conditional approval before results coming out so we can get it faster to the people who need it. Again, due to the very strong safety of this profile, we believe that there is no risk to the people and we would like we did not have any any side effects in the trials that we have done and we would like to get it as soon as possible.